open your we are going live right now okay okay sir so you can start your video yes sir so we can start your kalan you can also start your video yeah we are live right now Yes. Okay, then we can yes. start. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, students. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the interesting uh, second NASA power up, uh, which is a virtual solar observation. Yes, students. Uh, once again, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the interesting uh, second NASA power up, which is a virtual solar observation. I hope. Uh, let's just uh, wait for uh, three to five more minutes. Let's wait for uh, five more minutes, students. Uh, we need some other audience to join, and then we can uh, start this at uh, 6.10. Yes, uh, once again, good evening, students. Uh, welcome to this uh, NASA Olympiad uh, second power up. Uh, welcome to this uh, next uh, interesting second NASA power up, which is of uh, virtual solar observation. And uh, let me just uh, introduce uh, my educator to you guys, where he is our uh, educator, Dhruv, senior most astronomer from Maharashtra. And uh, he'll be uh, taking over from now. Over to you, Dhruv, you just uh, start this. Right, sir. Thank you so much. I hope I am audible and visible as well. Hello. Good evening. So very good evening, students. Long time. OK. So warmest greetings and welcome to this power up session. Our today's topic, pretty interesting one. That is virtual solar observations. Before I move ahead, I'll share my screen. Right. 
Okay. So, what's the weather currently in India? I mean, which which season is going on currently in India? Monsoon, right? Soon it will there will be winter, and after that there will be summer. In each of these weathers, the amount of sunlight we receive is different. The amount of heat we receive is different. The amount of light, the you know, different aspects they keep changing in different weathers, right? So that means our sun varies a lot. Correct. So it's a very interesting thing to study about when we are on Earth. Sorry, I'm just a minute. There's been some. There's been an issue. Sorry, come on. Sorry for the inconvenience. There's been some problem actually. Hello, is it is it working? Is my audio clear or is it still echoing? Yeah, your voice is uh, clear through. You can proceed. Okay. Dhruv, Dhruv, um, please switch off the YouTube, which is playing on your laptop, it seems. So there is some other tab with YouTube playing in the background. Yes, sir. Is it okay now? Hello? Yes, Dhruv, you can go ahead. Yeah, okay, great. So, as you were seeing, today's uh, topic is virtual solar observation. So now when we're talking about the sun, as I mentioned, it's very interesting to study about it. So now when I say the word sun, what comes in your mind? It's very hot, produces a lot of light, a lot of light, solar energy, etc. etc. factors, right? But the most important thing is it's a star. What is it? It's a star. So at night, you see many such stars, but the nearest to the earth, the sun. So the nearest star to earth is the sun. I'm pretty sure when I said the word that nearest star to the sun, uh, said nearest star to the earth is the sun. Someone or the other amongst y'all who are viewer, who are, are viewing this uh, lecture live, they might have thought of Proxima Centauri. I'm pretty sure, but Proxima Centauri is actually the nearest star to our sun. The star closest to us is our own sun. Okay, Proxima Centauri is the nearest star to sun. Now, you imagine. Sun is how far away? How far away is the sun? Right? The light takes around 3 lakh kilometers. Means it, the speed of light is 3 lakh kilometers per second. Okay. 3 
lakh kilometer per second. Now imagine of how much light it takes, how much uh, you know how much time this light takes for uh, the from the sun to reach to the earth. That is about eight point three light minutes. Light minutes. Why? Because light is traveling and reaching us in eight point three minutes. That's why. Just imagine if something happens to the sun, we come to know of it eight point three minutes later. Even if someday there is some I mean, something happens to the sun and it just like you no know, goes and becomes into a huge oh you no know, it dies, then we'll come to know of it eight point three minutes later. In a way, we are also like you know, looking back in time. So if I'm like this now, if I'm the sun and I'm looking at you like this, and then I change my face, if I change my direction, you'll come to know that eight point three minutes later. So from this, when scientists calculated, they came to know that sun also lies. If you're you know eight point three minutes is in astronomical astronomical terms, we are saying it's eight point three light minutes away. But when you're looking at it from physics perspective, you're a layman. If you have to look at it from kilometers, if you want to know how many kilometers it lies, then that is one hundred and fifty million kilometers. So one million is equal to ten lakh, and in ten lakhs there are six zeros. So one fifty million kilometer. Imagine how far that is. One fifty followed by more six zeros. That's how far the sun is from the earth. Apart from that, as I mentioned, we get light, we get heat. These are very important aspects with respect to life on Earth. So, see, these are important features which are there on of the sun. Now, we come to ancient mythology and cultural significance. In the ancient times, that time when science had not developed much, that time people would always pray. Okay, uh, just a minute, just a minute. Is my voice still echoing? No, though it's perfect. It's perfect. Great, great, great. So now, when we look back in time, at that time, when science was not much developed, that time people would pray to the sun, because at that time, sun, moon, wind, air, all these things were known as them gods. Because that time they didn't know. That time they hadn't. The mind hadn't progressed much to think scientifically. So whatever was there. They would pray to them. Please let there be happiness. Let there let everything be calm. So who who likes problems? No one likes problems, right? We all want happiness. We want to be calm. We want to stay contented. So that way. An interesting aspect you will I have led to tell you is about eclipses. When there would be eclipses, that time you know during a solar eclipse, what would happen? This is the sun. This is the moon. Okay. So sun moon comes in between the sun and the earth. At that time, there is darkness. So when something like that would happen, the people would be like, "Oh my God, oh God, what have we done wrong?" And then there would be different different things that we would do these in. And then that time there would be sacrifices. They would sacrifice animals, or they would pray. There would be you know, they would do some different rituals they would have so that they could please the sun god. And then after some time, the moon would go away, and then the sun would be back. It would be completely shining, and they would be like, "Ah, God is happy with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and all such things." Then next is I mentioned that one of the reasons for the presence of life on Earth. Now, my dear students, there is something called as Goldilocks zone. What is Goldilocks zone? It is that part where your planet is not very close to the sun, nor very far away from it. It is at a medium distance. And Earth exactly lies in the Goldilocks zone. Now imagine a planet like Mercury, which is very close to the sun. It's the first planet, super close to the sun. It will not harbor life. In the same way, if you go to Pluto, you are not going to find life there. So it is super cold there, super super cold. Hardly sunlight reaches there. So Earth is in such a place where you have adequate amount of sunlight. You have got all the things proper. As a result of which life can sustain here, but again, unfortunately, due to global warming, due to our own human deeds, the things, the ozone layer around the Earth that is present, which is protecting us from the harmful sun rays, that is getting depleted. 
as a result of which global warming is global warming is increasing harmful sunlight is also entering it can cause deadly diseases like you know, cancer so there are these things you know but nevertheless it's one of the reasons why we have life on earth then you have climates if you remember in the very beginning um, before that problem occurred uh, during this meet i inquired what is the weather so this different types of weathers that we have be it, you know uh, monsoon or winter or summer autumn all these things the major reason is one of the major factors that comes into being is the sun if it's not present you will not have any of this weather here present in fact earth would be a rock planet you know without the sun there would be no gravity the planets won't be revolving around the sun so earth will just fly away somewhere then if it gets captured in some other star's orbit then there will be something new that will take place and we'll have new weathers or something something of that sort then it's a renewable source of energy of course you have all seen solar panels that's there on uh, on your you know houses you can use your solar in fact um, calculators today in today's time when you have to do some complex mathematical calculation use calculators and this it has that small rectangular thing you know with those one two two to four uh, vertical lines on that shiny shiny it looks that's a solar solar cell that helps you so when basically your battery goes down when your battery of your solar uh, your calculator it stops working you can actually use sunlight and produce and power and then you can do your calculations on the calculator then you have seen solar panels on rooftops of houses or maybe even on terraces that is because then uh, the solar energy is used to produce electricity it is used in solar water heaters it is used to power different equipments at home in fact in in certain areas where there is you know complete huge patch of land just plain land they have applied solar Uh, solar panels there why because it generates electricity and it can be used in farming also see how humans have technological progress so far okay we have already covered covered this part bay earth varying climate then we come to something called as importance of solar studies now having known all these parameters okay having known all these parameters about the sun why it's so important all these things and we come to importance of solar studies now why why should we study the sun now this man man he has this worm in him or this curiosity so what happens is every day he sees that sun rises in the east and sets in the west later he realized that no earth's axis actually tilted because of that it looks like sun rises in the east and sets in the west now what happens is whenever you see something whatever whatever you see you get interested you want to see that thing in more detail so you either try to go very close to it or you make instruments or equipment such that you can zoom in on to the particular thing that you're interested in and then you can explore more about it. correct the same thing happened with respect to man he said sun is giving us so much energy so much light is present we can use it in so many aspects what is it what is it inside this sun that we are able to receive so much energy so much power so much light what what drives this sun and all these things you know okay yeah. so that's how that's how man started to wonder and started studying the sun so now what happened was why is sun uh, solar studies important now the first aspect that we need to understand stellar identity at night when man saw that there are so many stars he noticed that not all stars look like that of the sun sun appears orange in color and as it progresses into the morning skies it appears yellowish yellowish and then again in during sunset it appears reddish orange but at night when the stars shine some are bluish white some are yellowish some are red so then he started wondering ki why why is it happening that they don't look like that of the sun so in order to study before studying those stars which you can see in the night sky he 
He said, why not? Why not study our own star, star which is nearest to the earth? Is there? It rises every day, sets every day. Why not study it? And that's how we started studying. Then we came to know about different characteristics of that of the sun. And then as we proceeded ahead and we studied other stars, we came to know that sun is actually a middle-aged star. Imagine, sun is a middle-aged star. Then from these studies, we came to know that, okay, stars which shine at night, the ones which are yellow in color, the ones which are bluish white in color, the ones which are reddish in color, and then our own sun, all have different temperatures. That's how we came to know, okay, okay, if this particular star has this much temperature, then that means it has got to be something, it might be very young star, it might be an old star. Then as we progress, we came to know, oh, there are different types of stars as well. Some of them evolve slowly, some of them evolve very fast. And all of these things, they came into existence. Uh, just a minute, I'll just have some water. Now, the next aspect was, uh, now when we're having this so much light, so much power, then how come, how come it's being generated? What all is happening? That all, that all was, you know, studied by man. Then we came to know about something called as um, different aspects of the sun. Now, if we go back in time, when Galileo had this telescope, what he did was, he looked at the sun, but not directly. Remember, he didn't look at the sun directly. Why? Because if you look at the sun directly through a telescope, sunlight is so powerful that it will make you blind. Within one second, it will destroy your vision forever. So till death, you will rem remain blind and you, you cannot cure it. So he knew that. He was a scientist. So he, what he did was he projected the sun onto a screen. And when he did that, he came to know that there are something called as sunspots. Then he saw, okay, okay, there are something, these black black spots which are there on the sun. Then he first he cleaned the lenses on the, on the telescope. Then he saw, no. Then one day, twice, twice. Then he changed his telescope. Still he could see those spots. Then he understood that, okay, this is not on my eyepiece. It's not on my lens. This is on the sun itself. Then that assured a new era of research. What is this sun spot? Why is it happening? Then as man progressed, he came to know that these sunspots are actually due to magnetic fields. Due to these areas, which are black patches on the sun, they are due to very strong magnetic fields. And moreover, if you look at your screen, you'll see they are very, very, very large. Look at the earth. It is written to scale. So that earth is so small. At least if in this very very first immediate first uh, you know, sunspot that you're seeing inside this earth, at least I think nine to ten Earths will easily fit inside. It is that large. Secondly, you'll say, okay, you said that sunspot is due to twisting magnetic, but then why are they appearing black in color? They should have appeared white. So that is because if uh, you know, if I have say hundred degrees Celsius, okay, if I have water of hundred degrees Celsius and eighty degrees Celsius. You dip your hands in both of them. You'll see that both of them are very hot. Correct? Both, uh, both containers having 80 degrees and 100 degrees Celsius water, both of them are hot. But 80 degrees Celsius is slightly cooler as compared to the 100 degrees Celsius. And voila, that is exactly what is happening here. These spots, sun spots, they, their temperature is lesser than the surrounding temperature. So if you look at the central black patch, that is much, much cooler than the surrounding region, which is gray. And both of them combined are much, much cooler as compared to that of the surrounding area. That is where the two scale is written. That all patch, that is much more in higher end temperatures compared to those black spots. So since the black parts are slightly cooler as compared to the surrounding area, they appear black in color. But actually, if you land on them, it is very hot, sufficient enough to kill a person. Okay. Then, as Galileo progressed ahead, he saw that over a month, 
over as days progressed he saw new new such spots coming up slowly he discovered ki boss this is not one part the sun also rotates earth also rotates sun also rotates that means other planets also rotate so new science again new discovery and that's how no our astronomy progressed ahead see as i mentioned so now as time progressed man came to know ki okay you have sun spots the sun is revolving sun spots appear and then suddenly at one point of time there's no sun spot then he started to wonder why this happens now scientists in due course made regular observations and they came to know that over a cycle um, sorry not over a cycle over a period of about 11 years there are lots of sun spots and then there is no sun spot so when there is lot when there are lots of sun spots which are visible you call it as solar maxima and then you call uh, when you see there are no sun spots that is solar minima and this is an 11 year, uh, 11 year cycle so every 11 years you have many sun spots and after every 11 years there are no sun spots visible so that is due to sun's dynamics which are taking place you come to know ki boss no every 11 years even your magnetic field changes your polarity changes so sun sun's polarity keeps changing they flip the polarity so sometimes when your north is positive and your southern end is negative after 11 years it will flip and then your negative part will be up in the northern part and your positive part polarity will be downwards isn't that interesting that doesn't happen with earth but it happens with the sun it's very interesting okay after that what happened was this was a part of solar activity you know and then we come to know of space weather predictions so what happens here is you all must have heard you know uh, there are pretty much nowadays in whatsapp forwards you know at least one every, every year once every year you come to know you have these messages which come you today or not today this night there is going to be some geomagnetic storm or this day there is going to be a solar storm so keep your devices switched off don't use your mobile phones don't use your television don't use your radio keep all your technological devices off just use your normal light fan and everything one day keep it off or else this geomagnetic storms and all these things this will destroy so well that is because of sun's dynamics that takes place sometimes there are solar winds so they are you know just like this they are um, electromagnetic in nature so what happens is they tamper with technological devices as a result your devices starting here they act haywire means they don't act properly so this has not only affected devices like you know your radio or your mobile but it also affect our satellites which are there in space which provide us you know communication services which provide us imaging so when you want a satellite say if you are trying to you know um, displace a satellite if you want to point it to a particular point and then this mag this magnetic storm hits it they it will start acting in a weird way you wanted to point left it will point right but it might not point at all it will just seem it will remain constant in one place then you have something called as uh, you know stellar understanding so what does stellar understanding mean so you know that sun acts in a particular way so if sun acts like this then you start researching more so when you research you come to know okay this is the sun these are the different parts of the sun then you try to theorize okay if this is the case then there is something at the center so at the center you have the core of the sun that is what is powering the sun and it glows so much so if this is the case with respect to the sun then the stars that we see in the night sky even they might be in a similar way because sun is also a star and if sun is a star then at night the stars we see they might also be functioning in a similar way then you start researching more when you start researching more you come to know okay this star is something like this then you perform observation on that star and you say like okay this is also behaving in a similar way but then you say okay sun's contents are different then you say this star has different contents that's why they are different you know they look different and stuff like that then you have got astronomical calibrations what happens in astronomical calibrations is that sun 
Sir, one minute. I think my video is off. Yeah. Sir, I didn't realize my video was off. Yeah. There's something called as sun. Uh, sun is used for astronomical calibration. So what happens is when you use your particular instrument, so to see that it's pointing correctly and all the parameters set correct, the nearest star is sun. So then you know, okay, this is the central point. So you will take your, you know, equipment there. You will point it there properly. And then you calibrate stuff and everything. And then it will say, ki, okay, ha, it has been calibrated. This is correct. Then you can do it, use it on other stars and, you know, do more research. After that, you have got as um, space exploration. Now you come to space exploration. That means you all must have heard about uh, Aditya L1. It's a, you know, talk of the town currently. After our zero has landed Chandrayaan 3 on the lunar south pole. Now we have Aditya L1 mission, which is coming very soon. In September, it's going to be launched. So, what is that? That is, that there are different points, you know. Uh, okay, wait. Let me first explain what Aditya L1 is. Aditya, it's a Sanskrit term. Sanskrit term for sun. So, Adit, um, sun has got different names. You've got Ravi, then you've got Arun, you've got Aditya. So one such term was Aditya and Aditya was used. Then you will say, what is L1, sir? You didn't explain what is L1. So now around Earth, there are five points where a spacecraft can be situated. It can be launched from Earth and it can be put in that particular one of these five points from where it can look at the sun. So these points are known as Lagrange points. What are they called? Lagrange points. And there are five such points. So L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. From our, uh, our spacecraft, that is Aditya L1, it's going to go to L1 point. There it will stay calm and just keep observing the sun. And then we are going to make new discoveries. How the sun works, the different mysteries which are present, they all will be decoded. The activities of the sun, why, how they are taking place, that will be studied in much more detail. Already we have a few of the spacecrafts which are present. For example, SOHO, Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. Then you've got Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO. They're already present at such points and they're already researching. And India is going to have a new feather in its cap by placing Aditya L1 there. Now, we come to different methods of solar observations. We are nearing to our you know, virtual observation sessions. Now, different methods of solar observations. So, first thing is solar projections. Now, what happens in a solar projection? As I mentioned, you cannot directly look at the sun. You look like this, you're blind. You're blind means you're gone case. So what happens is it will totally destroy your eyesight. But here what we do is in projection method, we use the telescope to project the sun. So sunlight is incident on the telescope. The telescope produces an image and we use a white screen and we project that onto the white screen. So at a particular distance, what happens is we keep the screen and there the sun is projected as it is. So if you see in the very first image to the left, that was clicked today. Okay. So here we have used a telescope to produce the image of the sun. At the middle, this is the apparatus, how it looks like when you project the sun onto the screen. Now the extreme image on the right, that was again clicked today at 2.56 p.m. So can you see those two small dots there? They're actually not two, there are four of them. And that's sunspots. Okay. The thing that I mentioned a while ago, this intense magnetic field and you know relatively less temperature compared to the surroundings. So now how do you do a solar project? That is important. So I'll just show you uh, my video, how I did it today. Give me a moment. Okay. Uh, is this is the voice clear? Um, host, please let me know. Okay. Uh, nevertheless, I think I'll directly explain it because uh, I'm not quite sure if the audio is visible. 
So, uh, so what is happening here is I have placed my uh, telescope here. Okay. Now the telescope is placed and it's pointing towards the sun. But now, how do I point the telescope without looking at the sun? So what we do is we use something called as short shadow method. Short shadow method means when the sun is near the top, it's going to produce a very short shadow. We have all learned it. When your sun is at extreme cases, you know, when it's just rising or just setting, it's going to produce long shadows. But when it's at the top, it's going to produce smaller shadows. So when you point your telescope towards the sun, which is near upward somewhere, then it's going to produce a small shadow. So now this tube is very long. Okay. So if you point it in a wrong direction, I mean, that is, if it's not pointing towards the sun, it, you'll get a nice tube ka shadow. But if this tube is exactly pointed towards the sun, what will happen is it will come in a straight line. So sunlight is incident directly onto the tube and the shadow you'll get is like a circle, something like this. So that is exactly what happened in my case. So now I was going to point it. Unfortunately, due to clouds, there was no sun. And then we had sunlight. Okay. One minute. I'm not sure if it's going to be visible from here. See, there's a small shadow that is visible here. Very small. That's present here. Okay. So as I was explaining it there, suddenly there was sunlight. Means the sun peeped out from the clouds and there was a small shadow which was visible. Uh, see here. There's a small shadow that's seen here, right? And then what I did was I kept a piece of paper. Now I didn't have any volunteers to hold it and I didn't have a proper stand. So I took a piece of paper, A4 size paper, and I kept it. You can see the shadow here. I pointed it at the shortest. Now, once I was sure that it's pointed towards the sun, I took the white paper and I placed it near the eyepiece. Then I took it gradually away so that the thing is focused. The image that I'm getting, it gets focused. Okay. Again, the sun was playing hide and seek by going behind the clouds and everything. So it was a bit difficult. But then that's how it happened. And uh, finally, I could get a few images after a while, which is over here. Um, the one on the right, you can see the image on the right. That's how I got the image. Later, I found a volunteer, you know, to help me out. Then I asked him, you just hold this piece in paper in place, and then I projected it, and I got to see those sunspots. Now the next expert, how do you look at the sun directly? If you want to look at the sun directly, then how do you look at it? You can't. So you could use the telescope, that is one thing. But then if you want to actually look at it with your eyes, you'll need to use special protection. Remember, you must never look at the sun directly. You look at the sun directly, however it is. You look at it straight directly or you look at it through a telescope. You are going to go blind. So what you do is, we have special type of sunglasses. Uh, sorry, not sunglasses, uh, solar glasses. Don't look at the sun through sunglasses, yeah? by the way. That will still make you blind. You cannot look at the sun through sunglasses. Don't do that. It will damage your eyes. Don't do that. You have to use sunglass, uh, your solar glasses. They have a special type of filter. So what happens is, sun is so bright that when you use these uh, solar glasses, what happens is, it drastically reduces the intensity of sun. That is almost one by around, you know, almost one hundredth or one thousand times. That's how drastically it reduces the intensity of the sunlight. So now you will say, yes, sir, you're saying this. Then uh, how does it look like? So I'll show you even on the right hand side, actually, on the right hand side photograph, you can see that we have added a solar filter. For telescopes, you get a solar filter. The one to the left is a 
solar goggle. But to the one to the right is a solar filter. So you put that on your telescope. If you want to do telescopic observations, you put that and then only point towards the sun. So when you point towards the sun, you get something like this. Uh, I think I'd rather share my entire screen. That's better. Yeah. So. So when I'd been to a stargazing session, once I'd been to a stargazing session, and the next morning when we woke up after sunrise, the people decided, the astronomers, they told that we are going to, you know, sun gazing. So then they showed us through a filter. So this is exactly how it looks like through a solar filter. You can see those sunspots, right? Clearly, you can see the central part. The central dark spot is what you call as umbra. And the surrounding part is what you call as penumbra region. And this is how the exact sun looks like through the entire, on the whole, through the solar filter. Now I zoomed out of this eyepiece. If you want, just see, just have a look once again. That's how your sun spot. That's how the sun actually looks like when you use a solar filter. When you look at it through the eyepiece, by the way. That's how it is. But then, is it only possible? Sorry. Yeah. And now, the thing is, you will still have that curiosity. You know? so what will happen if I directly look at the sun through the eyepiece? So, that's how this is what is going to happen. Without using a sun, without using a solar filter. Imagine that matchstick burnt so quickly. Imagine what will be the case of your eyes. It will be like, like this, instantaneously. Okay. Then we come to different types of solar telescopes because you can't just do mere, you know, just merely looking at it through your eyes or just using a normal telescope, optical telescope, you can't do studies, right? So you need advanced level. So what happens is we come to higher. Uh, the institutes, government institutes like PRL, Physical Research Laboratory of Ahmedabad, they have made one solar observatory at Udaipur, Rajasthan. And then you have got your Kodai Canal Observatory of Indian Institute of Astrophysics, IIA, down south. They, what they do is, they click photographs of the sun and perform research. At Kodai Canal Observatory, even today, what they do is, they have a telescope and those photographic plates. So what happens is, you put that plate in front of that Telescope, attach it, remove the shutter. So, how previously what would happen in the previous time before our digital cameras came into existence, they would have it film. So, the moment you open, the shutter opens up, the light is imprinted onto the uh, film and the shutter closes. Even here, they do the same thing. They focus the telescope initially and they take images. Click, click, click. So, if you go there, there is a museum and there they have those photographic plates. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't, I couldn't find any photographs here, but if you go actually to this observatory, you'll find there are nice photographs of those uh, suns, sunspots and all those things. They are nicely visible. Now, then we do solar spectroscopy. What, what happens is these lines that you are seeing, see, you are most of already always seen that when you use a prism, sunlight gets bifurcated into seven colors, right? That's scattering of light. And then what, sorry, not scattering, dispersion. 
dispersion of light. And then you have this vibure. Now, when you use finer, like diffraction grating, or you know, you use some higher level instruments, you see these black lines. So each of these black lines represent the elements which are there on the sun. So what happened is when scientists did that, they got you know a spectrum of the sun with all these black lines. So on Earth, each element, when you pass light through it, there is a particular type of spectrum that is created. And when a particular line on that spectrum is made note of, and when you see the same line at the same position in the sun spectrum, you understand ki, okay. This element also exists. So basically, if I have hydrogen and helium on Earth, then this, this particular lines indicate the presence of hydrogen helium. So when I look at the sun and I have the similar spectrum present, I'm like, okay. So hydrogen helium, which is present on Earth, looks like this. Similar spectrum I received from the sun, that means that there is presence of hydrogen and helium on the sun also. So that is that is the way solar spectroscopy is also performed. Then you have got corona graphs. What this coronagraph do is basically it obstructs the sun. So if this is a sun, your coronagraph comes exactly at the center of it, and it obstructs the solar the sun. So as the name says, there is corona. So what happens is, can you see these um, bright parts which are present around? That is the coronal part of the sun. It extends up to like you know eight to ten million kilometers in space. Earth lies at one hundred and fifty million kilometers from sun, and this Corona that is present is extends up to 10 million kilometers, 8 to 10, kilom uh, 10 million kilometers. So imagine if this corona, if it hits the earth, then what? It is very hot. If it if it hits earth, the life is going to be dead completely. It's going to be destroyed. Okay. But nevertheless, this phenomenon was actually observed during total solar eclipses. So what would happen is when there is a total solar eclipse, Sun is totally obscured, uh, obstructed by the moon. And when that happens, you're able to see all these, you know, wavy, wavy things which are present around. It's all these, you know, can you see that? Things which are shooting out from the center of the disk. That is your corona. And this was observed. So what happened was we made it artificial. When you make an artificial corona graph, what happens is it obstructs the sun part. Okay. So you will get uh, these corona graphs for telescopes. So you apply it to the telescope and you can observe the corona around. And when you do that, this dynamics are pretty interesting. So we made, we sent spacecrafts like Soho, Parker Probe. They went into space and they have this corona graph. So it looks at the sun, obstructing the light and it looks at the corona. And an interesting aspect and a very interesting aspect is there is something called as sun grazing comets. Sun grazing comets means those are those comets which go very close to the sun and they die they don't make a complete trip around the sun. So many such sun grazing comets have been observed due to this corona graph because all that intense light is blocked. You can actually see a comet go and you know, commit suicide into the sun. Also, when you have got these big, big comets which come up, like, you know, recently there was new OS in back in 2020. Then uh, now we had this comet C2020, uh, 22, E3ZTF back in 2022. That time they were observed using this Parker probe. This image is of Parker uh, probe. And what happened was they saw the sun, uh, they saw the comet approach the sun and then complete a trip out. So when it appears, when it approaches close, we see it, it's very bright. But then whether it makes it, whether it completes its orbit around the sun, does it survive or not? That is to be seen. And that's how that's what we do using this corona graph. Because you can't look at this immediately, right? So then we make use of this corona graph to observe. Then we come to space-based observatories like that of Aditya L1, as I mentioned a while ago. India is going to launch Aditya L1 and then many more discoveries are going to be made regarding the sun. Many new mysteries will be solved. The one to your right is your solar and heliospheric observatory, that's SOHO, which was launched by European Space Agency and NASA. So that currently will be now, will be observing in a short while. This is an eclipse observation. So whenever there is an eclipse, people rush in large numbers to see the eclipse, especially the total solar eclipse. Why? Because first and foremost, you get to see those flare, uh, those baby baby things, you know, this corona. Why? 
because that only happens that's only visible during your total solar eclipse during different types annular or partial solar eclipse you cannot see them so you either need a corona graph or you need a total solar eclipse spot so that's your corona then you see those uh, prominences also can you see these red patch reddish white parts here they are your solar prominences so what happens is there is a sudden you know outburst so what happens is it go it comes out from the sun but it doesn't go straight into space it goes into a loop it's something like it starts from here and goes here so that's your solar prominences and even they travel up to thousands of kilometers into space and they are very very hot much hotter than the corona so so all these things are observed and this was actually photographed during during a total solar eclipse so imagine what all how cool it is to actually witness a total solar eclipse now solar imaging in other wavelengths so this is sdo the sdo is solar dynamics observatory so it has photographed the sun in different wavelengths you can see this 9.4 nanometers 13.1 nanometers they are all in different wavelengths so each wavelength capture something new something different so what is visible in one particular wavelength that is not visible to another so for example what is visible in 9.4 nanometers that is not going to be visible in a 33.5 nanometer region and vice versa right see this is same this has the, all this has been photographed by the solar dynamics observatory you can see different different parts surface movement of photosphere then magnetic field polarity photosphere visible light photosphere then corona flare plasma flaring regions active regions all these in their different different aspects which have been photographed by the solar dynamics observatory and in different wavelengths that, that is why if you look at the images all of them appear different and something or the other new can be seen that's cool then we also see how to you know get an idea of all these things this is also a bit complex we won't go into much interior remember the sun is so the sun is powered by the core at the core all the fusion takes place and the sun is powered then what you can see maximum on the sun that is the photosphere is the deepest layer of the sun which you can see then the prominences which was present see can you see it's a bit curved it's like this it's in a loop type so you can't see the entire loop here but it's actually a loop then you have got the sunspot regions sunspots which have seen had mentioned that are relatively cooler then you can see flares what are flares flares are, uh, you know on the surface suddenly a part brightens up due to the dynamics the bright part that is a flare that comes up then you have got the coronal regions that extends into space all that wavy wavy stuff and others that's a bit complex so we won't go much we won't dwell much into that and now finally the topic we were awaiting what are observations of the sun so now this soho as i mentioned it tells you where the sun spots are i'll uh, just in that okay so if you look at this soho website it only shows you in one particular wavelength that that's how the sun is and there are sunspots which are present so every day if you check this site you'll see new sunspots or this old sunspots will also be present of course now this guy 3.3416 this guy will take some time to come to this upper end where 3412 is present so it will take some time because sun revolve uh, sorry rotates about its axis it will take time but you will also see new sunspots as the days progress you will see new new sunspots coming up so this is one one side where you can see and just look at the earth and jupiter's comparison with respect to the sun how small they are and then you can uh, close this and then we'll come to this one this is the most interesting
this is a very interesting site because unlike soho site soho site oh, sorry pardon me what soho does is soho only shows you the image and the sunspots this thing also gives you many other lot other information let's see like you not only have all these sunspot numberings each sunspot has a number by the every day you will be able to see that and then if you go down you'll get to see more information a lot more information is present here as compared to the soho website that i showed a while ago so this is sunspot number you can see there are so many sunspots new regions which are present and all these things so unfortunately i don't have much time or as i would have taken a much more deeper session about this sun and then i could have explained many more things about this but yeah as you go down you will get to see many more and see you have an analysis of each and every sunspot here present like say for example if i want say 3416 Okay, not three four one. Let's say three four one five. It's very bright, right? So we'll go to three four one five. So if I want to go to three four one five, so see. Now number of sunspots here. You have got five. Looks like one on that entire disk. It looks like one, but when you zoom in, you have got one, two, three, four, and five. See, you can see three bulges here. Right? One, two, three, and then four, five. You have got five sunspots here. Then you have got size. Then you, have, if you can't understand anything, you can also click on this question mark, and that will help you explain. See if you can understand. If you can't, you can definitely approach us on the ISRC, you no know, community. You can always ask. We are there to help you out. And this is the end of the page. So now. that brings us to the end of our uh, presentation this is just a photograph yeah any questions if you have any questions you can put it forth in the youtube chat box and secondly uh, before we depart one thing is i want you all that having known this about both these sites i want you all to check these sites every day if you have a telescope If you have a telescope, purchase a solar filter, and if you are not sure, if you are not sure how to use it, you can always approach us. There are many YouTube videos also, but I suggest instead of going directly there, you can approach us. We will try to help you out as much as possible. You can use a solar filter. You can purchase solar goggles. They are available on Amazon, Flipkart. You can do that, and you can observe it by yourself. And also keep checking these websites, this Soho and this Space Weather uh, website. it will be posted by the co-host soon on the youtube chat box i wanted to check it every day see what all are the differences notice how large sunspots are how small sunspots are try to keep a track how many sunspots are being visible every day try to do this activity for a month and you will notice some pattern you notice some changes you will see how much large sunspots appear and if you do this for one whole year you will have tremendous data to research upon Now imagine at such a young age you will be able to research. You can find out simple, simple things from that. You can plot a graph about how many sunspots are visible throughout the year, time, number of sunspots versus time, then their sizes, sizes data. All you are getting on your uh, on that website itself, that versus the sunspot size, amount number of sunspots with respect to time. Also, you can do your own research at such a young age. So that's the thing. So keep checking this website and whatever I had said, think it over. If you have any doubts, you can put it forth. Else, that's all I have to present for today. Thank you so much. And any questions are welcome so far. Thank you. Thank you, Dhruv, for such an informative webinar. I hope uh, our audience had got some wonderful insights on it. So here are some some of the questions from our curious audience. So uh let's go with the first question and that is why some spots are darker than the rest of the area why the sun spots are why the sun spots are darker than the rest hmm. of the area sun spots are darker than the rest of the area oh that's a good question i think i had mentioned about it but nevertheless 
Okay. So see, I use a laser pointer this time. Okay. So I hope you're able to see this part. Right. So this part where my laser pointer is currently, this is around say um, Kelvin. We measure temperature in astronomy. We measure temperatures in Kelvin. So one degree Celsius is equivalent to two. Uh, sorry, one Kelvin is equivalent to two seventy three degrees Celsius. First thing, one degree Celsius. Uh, sorry, one Kelvin is two seventy three degrees Celsius. And this area that you are seeing, this is around five thousand seven hundred Kelvin. That means you have to multiply five thousand seven hundred Kelvin multiplied by two seventy three. To get an estimate of how much the temperature here is in degree Celsius, okay. So this is the temperature, five thousand seven hundred Kelvin. Now, this grey region that you see, the darker grey region, that is much cooler. Uh, is it not much cooler? It is slightly more cooler as compared to this surrounding temperature, surrounding area. So, if this this temp area is say. Uh, I'll go to the Okay, if this is say five thousand seven hundred Kelvin, where did the pointer go? Okay, this region, then yeah, this region might be say somewhere around um, let's say five thousand five hundred Kelvin. Okay. So this is also sufficient enough to kill a person. So what you can't even go near to this place. If you are placed position here, destroy it. But look at the temperature difference. There is almost two hundred Kelvin difference, here, correct? Between this area and this. Uh, sorry. Uh, So between this region and this normal region, you have a temperature difference of two hundred Kelvin. Now this dark region, dark black places that you can see, that might be around say five thousand three hundred Kelvin. So that means there is a difference of four hundred Kelvin between this black region and this normal gray region. So since this central region is Very cool compared to this. I'm saying very cool compared to the surrounding region. That is why it's appearing black. Then the surrounding region, that grey color region which is surrounding the black part, that is slightly hotter than the dark, the black part at the center. That is why it's appearing greyish. But it is cooler than this 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 part. You know. So all this region say comparison. Me, this part is cooler. That is why it's appearing greyish. But it is hotter than this black part, and finally, this surrounding region. This is hotter than both the dark black patch also and the grey patch also. That is why you can see those different colors. Uh, I hope that is answered the question. Uh, okay, let's move ahead to second question, and that is, sir, how can we measure how large the sunspot is? Hmm. That's that's a good question. Well, for that you need advanced mathematics, and of course you need your uh, or telescopes measurements. You can't just do it, you know. Just merely by looking at it, you can't do that. You will need telescope properly. There are different things, you know. There are RA, declination, all those things that come into us. Then you move your telescope from one point to another point, and you measure. Plus. You have got your spacecrafts and all those things, which are measuring, which which are at those Lagrange points present, and they observe, and then when they observe the sun, they look at that, and then calibration and all those things are done, and then you get the measurements. It's it's a bit complex, so yeah, that's that's how it's occurring. Okay, uh, let's move to third question, and that is, sir, I had a doubt that who discovered the concept of sunspots. Hmm. Galileo. Like at least what I have read, 
it was galileo because he had projected so what he did was he was using a telescope of course when you have a telescope and it is brand new at that time the invention it was brand new so he you know pointed telescope at different different things at different different celestial objects he was an astronomer of so he said okay fine if i can look at jupiter and see the moons i can look at saturn and find and see the rings then why not have a look at the sun also so he looked at the sun and he projected it and when he projected it then he saw sun spots and he was like oh these are black spots so initially thought that there might be something on the lens so tried to clean it then even changed the telescopes but still he didn't find he saw that the sun spots are still present means the spots are still present then he was like okay so that means there is something on the sun itself and then he concluded okay the sun has spots and in due course he noticed that the sun spot which is present today after one week it has moved and then he said oh so that means that's moving also so that also implies that if sun spots are moving then sun is also rotating and then for that progress to place so that's that's the case well this is as per the information that i have read somewhere you can always check it out on google anyone else okay so our next question from the audience is what is the solar storm okay so uh there are no outbursts a sudden of flaring up of the sun and uh, it has those electromagnetic particles basically not exactly able to put it forth imagine there's a stream of particles which is coming out from the sun okay now it generally sun tends to release those stream of particles that that's very there's a normal number but suddenly there's an outburst there's a huge amount that is thrown into space and when it when earth comes in contact with it that time it tends to tamper the electrical devices that we have because there are magnets also electric electric and magnet electric and magnets they are both of them are working inside a device and it tampers with them and that is why those problems take place so that's how you can say okay i didn't one minute so what was the question exactly how or why what is a solar storm <clears throat> i think uh, the yeah, audience okay, have uh, got the answer i suppose yeah yeah okay okay what okay so yeah. next question is how can we predict the solar storm as you have said before like the solar storm is going to happen in 2025 so how do we predict solar storms first and foremost you look at the sun's activities that are taking place okay and plus regularly you have these storms which keep coming so you can predict a rough you can give a rough estimate ki okay it has happened here happened here so then it might be also happening in the on this particular date that will be you always try to find a trend in between right you try to find a trend and secondly you have again you've got your spacecrafts up there which are observing so if there are any changes there are any variations in your uh, sun's dynamics you understand ki okay there is a possible chance ki this might hit and then you calculate that's all okay uh i think let's take this question this is interesting how the sun spots are created ah okay mm sun spots so okay this is this will be a bit complex to explain frankly okay i'll revert back to this i'll write down proper answer and i'll send it will that be fine i think will, yes that should be fine that should be fine yeah because explaining it thoda thoda complex ho jayega okay i hope uh, uh, our audience had enjoyed the session it was lovely to have you here on the platform thank you so much thank you sir. thank you everyone